I'd shower you with coconut cream pies. What the hell is that about? The 1980s and 90s were a weird time for video game adaptations. There was the Mario Brothers movie, the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, and a bunch of other stuff, but they had one thing in common. They usually weren't that good. But in the late 90s, something new arrived, and that was the Donkey Kong Country cartoon show. That's right, this lovable ape finally got his moment, and it was freaking weird. Come on, put a lip lock on me, Dixie. That jump chip diddy will never know. You lousy double crossing two time and. Wait till Diddy gets a load of this! This cartoon stands out to me in a few ways. First off, and most obvious, the animation. It was done via CGI, and that was relatively new territory for the time. Next, the source material. We go from a gorilla who can't talk to a gorilla who can't stop talking, or singing for that matter. I Overall, I want to know if this show was any good. Does it break the mold and stand out as a video game adaptation? Or does it belong in the hall of failure along with everybody else? Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. Well, let's find out. Before we talk about Donkey Kong Country the show, we gotta talk about Donkey Kong the video game franchise. It began in 1981 with an arcade game called Donkey Kong. The game itself was created by Miyamoto of Nintendo and was a huge hit. It was also technically the first time that Mario appeared in a game. In 1994, Nintendo struck gold again with Donkey Kong Country. This was the game that would define DK and would also serve as the basis for the cartoon series. The show itself came out in 1997 and ran for three years. It was French Canadian and used motion capture for a majority of its animation. This was new territory for the time and was done by a company called Media Lab. Now, some people thought that this captured the essence of the video game, and for others, eh, not so much. Also, according to a source, the first batch of episodes were seen as as too racist and sexist, and had to be toned down for kids. Makes you wonder what the hell they came up with. Remember, I'm your sidekick, your second in command, bosom buddy. Thanks. All right, let's go over my five points. Story. Honestly, the writing isn't that bad. The episodes held my attention and even got a few laughs out of me. But with most video game adaptations, you run into the problem where your main characters don't really talk. So what do you do? Do you keep them that way or do you give them a voice? And if you do give them a voice, does that spoil the character? I mean, DK in the video game just comes across as this big, smiling gorilla who goes around bonking on bad guys. But in the show, it's different. He's talkative, outgoing, and a bit of a dummy. Now, are these bad changes? I don't think so. It works with the show, but I wouldn't be surprised if other people don't like what they did with DK and the other characters from the game. Whose banana peel is that? What banana peel? The one that was left on the ground. The one that I slipped on. The one on your head, you baboon! Dialogue. It's pretty good. Again, the show made me laugh, and I appreciate how sassy and funny the characters are. Writing? Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't that involve knowing something? Editing. Mm, it's par for the course. Audio is balanced. Scenes run smoothly. My only complaint is how song sequences just happen. Like, boom, song time. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Now, one could argue that this isn't necessarily an editing problem and is more of a writing one, but regardless, the transitions into the songs can be quite abrupt. Can you pass me a banana, little buddy? DK, is that really you? Who else would it be? Voice acting. I like it. I really wasn't much of a Donkey Kong fanatic as a kid. I mean, I played the games, but that was it. To me, DK was just a gorilla beating up bad guys in the jungle. But here in the show, he has a lot more personality and has a voice to match that charisma. 
The same can be said for the rest of the cast. The people who made this show decided to shake things up with the source material, and that can definitely be seen here in the voice acting. Also, some of the songs are really catchy. And finally, animation. Outside of changing the source material, this is the most interesting aspect of the show to me, and it absolutely stands out. I mean, I discovered this show from people using clips as memes, and my god, do they look bizarre. Take it easy, dude, <laughs> but take it. Personally, I feel that the designs aren't that bad. The studio was limited with the technology they had at the time. And even then, I feel that the designs are somewhat close to the characters from the games. But I do gotta say, DK looks freaking weird standing up. It makes his butt stick out. Got ourselves a thick boy. Damn. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he thick. Boy, that's a thick ass boy. Damn. Like I said before, a majority of the show was done via motion capture. That's when you have a person wearing a suit and their movement synchronizes with a character on screen. It's basically Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And that really does explain why the characters move around so much in the show. Like, it's rare to see them not moving around, even when they're standing. Also, it's just funny looking in general. My editor had a good point in that DK is really floaty for a guy of his size and weight. Like, just look, he's moving his arms around his body like he weighs 120 pounds. He is very flexible for a muscular gorilla who runs on his front arms. How can such a pretty thing as this make things really go amiss? All I want is candy's kiss. All right, so let's talk about a few of the episodes from the show. There's 40 in total, but I'm only going to talk about three to keep things short. The first one here is Bad Hair Day. It starts off with Cranky jamming out. Actually, a lot of the episodes start off this way. We are then given this rundown of the show and what it's about. The Crystal Coconut is magical. DK is a future king of the jungle. King K. Rule is the villain, and DK typically beats him up. So K. Rule comes up with a plan to curse DK by cutting his hair. Yeah, this is straight out of the Bible with Samson and Delilah. Also, check out the text in the book. It's like someone just slammed their face on the keyboard. We then meet Candy, DK's girlfriend. She works at the barrel factory and puts up with her boss's harassment. Like, seriously, the guy's a creep. Banana cream, your favorite. <sighs> Rejected. Watching my figure. Don't bother. I'm watching it for ya. I was gonna get you a cake, but I see you already got one. Donkey Kong? Every single time you show up, things just fall apart. I guess this means our date's off, huh? I love how they cut off right before he supposedly dies. So K. Rule builds a candy robot and sends her off to go cut DK's hair. But not before we get a song. I'm Candy Kong's only look like we're one and the same. <laughs> Gotta love that motion capture. Now this is literally the best thing ever. I always thought that this bit of DK's head was his hair. <laughs> nope. That's his skull. So DK loses his strength, and K. Rule takes the crystal coconut. What happened? Ever since Candy cut my hair and told me she wanted to make me her little love slave. Love slave. Love slave. Cranky makes some kind of special potion to switch DK back, but Bluster throws it on the ground. Fortunately, though, it grows into a banana tree. Said bananas are fed to DK. And he grows his hair back? Sure, why not? DK then takes back the crystal coconut and everything goes back to normal. Except DK Skull. That ain't normal. He needs to go to the doctor like yesterday. Next, we have Kong for a day. It starts off with this annual ceasefire between DK's friends and the Kremlings. They start talking about the future rulers of stuff and Diddy gets upset over being just a sidekick. Besides, you got a future future psychic and best little buddy. Thanks, DK. But that's all I'll ever be, sidekick, second banana. K. Rule starts scheming and wants to trick people into thinking that DK is not dependable. 
So DK is bummed out that folks are getting upset with him, and it just gets worse. I used to hang here with my girl, but that's history. Aw, uh, you hook up with somebody, DK. Hey, what about you, Dixie? Little Dixie Doodle, you are fine. Diddy gets angry at DK, even though the Kremlings are the ones screwing with him. It's so bad that DK gets banished from the jungle. And we get a song. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm getting all the blame for things I didn't do. Can anybody tell me just what I did wrong? Again, the guy can sing. With DK gone, Diddy is now in charge, and what a surprise, he can't do it. Also, I love that Diddy sounds like Mickey Mouse whenever he sings. What do you expect from someone who has never ever been the king before? But DK comes back to save everyone and becomes king once again. And finally, we have the big switcheroo. It starts off with Cranky and his robot. Apparently, the guy's a genius and even has mind transferring technology. Of course, DK is a dummy and switches bodies with the robot. Help, Diddy! I've fallen and I can't get up! Oh, you cannot tell me that wasn't a reference. I've fallen and I can't get up! Can you pass me a banana, little buddy? DK? Is that really you? Who else would it be? Diddy's song just comes right out of nowhere. It's like your friend saying, oh man, I have herpes. And then I'm like, you, you got sexual transmitted diseases all over your crotch region, get away from me. I just made that up. <laughs> um, uh, I should be a musician. Robot, you give me a pain in the neck. Wait, no, robot, no. Well, he's dead. It gets even worse, and Candy and General Clump switch bodies. And here's the best part of the episode. Diddy and Cranky just roast the hell out of DK's misfortune. No, hold on, DK will be okay. He's got a good head off his shoulders. <laughs> oh, this is giving me a headache. Headache, <laughs> get it? <laughs> like it's pun after pun after pun, and it goes on for nearly a minute. What's the matter with your voice? <coughs> uh, a little cold. Uh. Say, as long as we're alone, maybe we could start our picnic date. What do you say, my adorable little pet? Mm. Oh, you, you are way out of line, soldier. Well, now you know what it's like to be a girl. At the end, they were able to switch bodies back, and then they kicked the shit out of K. Rule. I've had it with robots. Robots give me a giant pain in the backside. Pain in backside. <laughs> Again, there's 40 episodes in total, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are plenty of other wacky moments from the show. Overall, the show isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I'm actually surprised how much fun it is, though it definitely shows its age. I also like this show because they were bold with it. They took the source material and tried to do something new. And all things considered, I personally don't think it was too disrespectful to the game franchise. Again, the animation has aged, and it looks goofy with its movement and expressions. But it's not unwatchable like some other shows. As far as the negatives go, it's more of a preference. Someone might not like the show because it's too silly, or they don't enjoy the writing or the characters. In their eyes, it's extreme and not loyal to the source material. But that's really the problem with video game adaptations in general. They're, uh, <laughs> they're just not that good. It seems to be a cursed market, and only a handful are seen in a positive light. Most video games are meant to be seen from the perspective of a character. And typically, said character does not talk very much or at all. This is especially true for Nintendo properties. Yeah, there are exceptions and cinematic video games are a thing, but they haven't successfully crossed the threshold. Movie and show producers remain cautious of the gaming genre and what can come from it. Some of the more successful video game adaptations that come to mind include Angry Birds, the Warcraft movie, Rampage, but these are seen more as financial successes rather than critical. And even then, they aren't making an insane amount of money. TV series seem to be in the same boat as movies, but there's hope. 
The Castlevania series on Netflix has been a lot of fun, and it looks really good. Hopefully, that will set the standard, and some other franchise will follow. Seriously though, the people who are making this Castlevania series should also do a Metroid version as well. Overall, video game adaptations have room for improvement. I mean, look at comic book movies. They used to be a joke, but now they are one of the most successful genres in cinematic history. The same might be possible for video games if they're done right. And check it out, we got some contenders on the horizon. The Mario move, <sighs> no, done by Illumination. Okay, well, maybe not that one, but how about the Sonic movie? Oh my god.